We just finished a fantastic tasting of some of the most amazing uh, cause wines that, that I've ever tasted before. Um, why don't we start with, we already tasted the 2011, and let me work my way back uh, the 2010 or 9. Those were two outstanding vintages, but they were very different in terms of, of growing seasons, weren't they? 2009 is, is um, a vintage where Mother Nature was kind to us all year round with fairly low crop and very rich uh, phenolic contents. 2010 is a sort of more classical vintage as we have experienced in Bordeaux um, in the great vintages such as 86, uh, maybe 85, certainly 1990. Uh, a bit um, cooler in temperature, um, so less uh, phenolic ripeness, but more tannic structure. Two different expressions. Yeah, yeah but it, it, and it's interesting. Two different expressions, yet two outstanding vintages at the same time, back to back. 2010, I found it just absolutely fantastic. Um, they had great, great aromas of blackberry, blueberries, kind of smoky tar in there. Had great structure to it. It was absolutely a fabulous wine and absolutely delicious. Um, your opinion of the 2010? As I said, it's it's aristocratic. It's uh, classical of claret and bordeaux. <laughs> Uh, and it has that spiciness that you find in two cups. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. Uh, the 2009 was just a phenomenal wine to taste. That was just, just tremendous. Um, tremendous fruit, um, absolutely, it's just, it was pure, it was intense, great tannins, great acidity, great deep fruit. Um, you know, seems like a wine that may take a while to, to reach its prime going forward and probably should, should sleep for a while. I think it's, it's an extraordinary wine. It's clearly one of the best vintage we have ever produced at Goss. Um, in the same league in 82 and 59 and 47 and 49. Uh, it's one of the greatest vintage ever produced. We got everything in the same hands at the same time. Yeah, and, and, and it, ha it has that structure, it, it has the taste, it has the flavor to it, the balance. Um, it, you, just, you could just see the sleeping for a bit and letting it rest for a bit and then waking this up and just watching how this develops. So this, this could have a 30, 40, 50 year you know, life ahead of it, perhaps longer. Even much more. Yeah, yeah. You and I were discussing the 2006, which I think is one of those forgotten vintages in the shadows of 2005. Really a very big wine, lots of structure, lots of tannins. Very delicious, um, you know, great blue and black fruits, licorice, again, that kind of charcoal -y, um, uh, tar, tannin nature, but really a much bigger wine than, than, uh, than I have remembered. It's a big masculine wine, it has big shoulders. It's a fabulous wine with, I think, tremendous aging potential with this structure. So um, I, I'm looking forward to that one in the future too, uh, hopefully. Um, the 2005, um, really, again, a, a great wine, um, just Delicious, uh, uh, you know, perfumes there of, of, of licorice. There was some. I actually picked up some Asian spices in, in that one a little bit as well. Um, some creme de, uh, de cassis, uh, some blackberries. Uh, just a, a fabulous wine. Um, you know, in some ways it might rival, um, you know, the uh, uh, the 2003, but it, it's just it's a fabulous wine. It's in the line of the 2010. It's very classical, very aristocratic, very elegant, very vibrant. I, I, can, I can only agree with you. 2003 really fascinated me um, in terms of, of, there was so much reputation of the heat in that vintage and so much concern, I think, early on that um, the wines might be a little overdone. I don't think that's the case at all. This was, um, this is just a, a, a tremendous wine. Um, you know, great freshness, elegance, um, some persistence with it. Um, great bursts of fruit, but it's not a wine that's cooked, um, sort of subtle black fruits, again, that kind of smokiness under, underneath this. Uh, fabulous wine, considering the challenge that you had with the heat, that vintage. Well, it was like, a little bit like 89, uh, very excessive weather conditions. We had a heat wave in Western Europe in the first two weeks of August. Um, and fortunately for us in Santa Estef, we have the clay under the gravel, so the old vines with deep roots could access the humidity and the freshness of the, of the clay. Right. Uh, right. So we have produced wines which are very rich. Um, probably if I would make a comparison, I would say the 05 is like the 2010 and the 03 is like the 09. Interesting.